Oh, my hearties, there you are, dinky do. It's just me, Scotty McClue. And we are, of course, live on the big one. Facebook Live, Sunday night, nothing gets past me. Welcome, 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 I say. Now, we've only got one hour. One hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment. So let's use it well and use it wisely. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue live right now. Facebook Live just for you. Now then, so much happening and so little time. It passes in a flash. There we are. I'll just get my hat right for you. Hello, this is Derek Jimmy Walker. Hello, Derek Jimmy Walker. Welcome, 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 I say. Gus McPhee watching. And uh, Karen Mercury says, good evening, Scotty. Good evening, Karen. Lovely to have you with us. This is the big one, folks. The global talk show. The finest piece of television you will receive. Hi, Scotty. Good to see you. Says Ryan William McCree. How are you today? Excellent, Ryan. Just fantastic. Thank you. Good evening, says Thomas Hamilton. Derek Jimmy Walker. Hello, Karen. There we are. And Shirley Cooper. Good evening, Scotty. Says Steve Burrows. Welcome, 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 folks. Tonight, what are we talking about? How many children do you think a couple should have in their marriage, right? Very interesting point, this. How many children do you think a couple should have? None? One, two, three, four, five, six? You decide, and you tell me what you think's best. Good evening, Scotty, says Andy Hughes. Joseph Gibbons. Hello there, my friend. All right, Scotty, says Brian Lafferty. Absolutely, Brian. Dinky-doo, and a very warm welcome to the Sunday night pop-up. What an amazing week it's been this week. <clears throat> Fantastic. John Houston, dinky-doo, 10. He thinks you should have 10 children. Say why, John Houston? Good evening from Edinburgh, Scotty. Hurry up and come back to Scotland, says Ian O'Donnell. It's all in the pipeline, Ian. It will happen. Let's watch this space. Raymond Benson, no more than four children, says Eddie Doby Senior. Eddie Doby Senior, we need a bit more information. Come on now. And uh, Stephen Wearmouth is watching from the northeast. Derek Jimmy Walker, excellent stuff. Sherry says not well. Gordon Roddick's watching. Gordon, thank you for all your wonderful support and for your vision and for your thoughtfulness and for your generosity and for all the wonderful things, the great example that you set to all of us who broadcast. Fantastic stuff. Gordon Roddick there, one of our finest broadcasters and one of the nicest people you could ever hope to meet. Gordon Sterling's watching. Thank you, Helen Torley says three children. Brian Lafferty says 1888. I think that's the year he was born. I don't think he means that's how many children you should actually have. What we're trying to do here, folks, is find an optimum number of children that works ideally for you in a marriage because... Very important point. When a child is born, when a child is born, you can't put them back. My mother had four sets. I missed that there. William Henderson says 3,000. Do you remember Joseph Locke, says Joseph Gibbons? I am a massive Joseph Locke friend. My friend remembers Joseph Locke actually coming to perform at the television station. So there we are. I think Joseph Locke had kind of two huge careers and one later in life. Scotland's underpopulated. Yes, indeed. Well, Scotland was depopulated through social injustice. It would love, be lovely to see it populated through social justice. As many as they can afford to keep and look after. It's up to them, Scotty, says Thomas Hamilton. Yes, but should it be up to them? Are there irresponsible people out there who don't have children when they should be having children? Are there people who have a lot of children when they perhaps should have just had one or two? Dinky do, Scotty, says Stephen Wearmouth. Dinky do, Stephen. Lovely to have you with us and a very warm welcome to the Sunday evening pop-up. We are, of course, live on the big one. Facebook Live, the one everyone's talking about, the one everyone is watching. Better King Pat is watching, Dinky do. I say zero, but it could depend on how many you can afford to keep. I'm not sure of your views, Scotty, but I have to agree with your Scott FM days views, says Karen Mercury. We had a massive, massive following on Scott FM. 
200,000 people per half hour. And the biggest figures on any radio station in the country, including at that time, a national radio station. There you are. So uh, that's another reason for Scotty McClue to be on your radios and televisions. Dinky-doo, but we're on Facebook Live right now, and this is the big one. My sister has three kids, says Joseph Gibbons. One of each. <laughs> I, there's a problem out there. Who shouldn't have children and poor people who would love wains but can't have them, says Neely Davy Cooper McCallum. David Hennis is watching, Dinky Do. Welcome, David. You're watching Scotty McClue, the first lord of the internet, and of course, the world's top broadcaster. And here we are. When are you back, says Ronnie Stevenson? Aha! Don't know, Ronnie. Haven't had the phone call yet. Uh, scrape the something machine, and you get John Houston. I think you're just about to get binned for comments like that. But uh, what we'll do is we'll just take that comment out. That's what we'll do. So there we are. Delete the comment. Next time it will be a block. Elaine Curry is there. Vincente Bimendi. Excellent. Lovely to have you with us, guys. Thanks, Scotty. This is David Hennessy. Not at all, David. Lovely to have you with us. And Dinky Doo from Scotty McClue. Do you have children, Scotty? Well, I may have, Helen Torley. I think I won't say anything because that might change the debate. So there you are. Guten Abend, Herr McClure, says Greg MacArthur. So excellent stuff. Hi, Scotty fellow, says Gary Davidson. Welcome, welcome, welcome to every single one of you. If you've just joined us, then you are a tiny bit late. We do start at 10 o'clock sharp, but it's lovely to have you with us. We've only got one hour, so do not waste a second and get sharing and sharing and sharing and tell everyone about this broadcast. Let them know that we're live now. If you want to share now and start us off, fantastic. We're talking about many, many things tonight. One of the subjects that I'm putting out to you guys is how many do you think is an ideal number of children to have? If my wife was pregnant with twins, I'd want to know who the other dad was. <clears throat> Dinky do, McClure, says John Kinnear. No problem at all. Stow it out and stab it through, Scotty, says Alan McGee. Scotty McClure's phone ends. Not always stowed out and stab it through. Now, talking of which, phone ends, let's get you coming on and messenger tonight. A child should always have a family that loves them, says Andy Hughes. Good evening, Scotty. I believe as many children as you can afford to keep. If they can afford to bring them up in a healthy, happy environment, as many as they like. Sharice so says she's broke her back. Oh, no. Uh, so there we are. John Kinnear, gents, family, uh, done it, pal. Says Thomas, thank you, Thomas. Bit of sharing going on there. Excellent stuff. I'll just uh, do a little bit here as well and get us moving on that one. Louise Gemmell's watching. Come and join us, Louise. Lovely to have you with us. This is Scotty McClure saying dinky do to every single one of you. Remember, we're global. We're right across the world. So a uh, huge, huge numbers. Uh, America, the West Indies, Canada. Australia, New Zealand. Two kids is enough, says Sharice. She's shared already. Excellent, Sharice. Very, very good of you. I'll just do some sharing, and I'll put live now. There we are. Excellent. One big share there. Let's see. Just wait for it to come up. Sorry. Just Tiny bit of silence brought to us courtesy of the Noise Abatement Society. Our thanks go out to them. Share in public. Let everybody know. Um, ben Lucas, welcome, welcome. You're watching Scotty McClue. Sunday night, nothing gets past me. This is the big one. Uh, although it's possible for twins to be fathered by two different dads, although very rare. Yes, very rare indeed. I think that's probably more of a story that somebody's been told. Welcome to all Scottonians. As long as you're a stable, hard-working, loving family, there should be a limit, Scotty, says Stephen Wearmouth. My daughter says, hi, Scotty, says Helen Tolley. Hi, Dinky Do from Scotty McClure. Uh, being adopted myself, parents should be blessed with one or five children. Andy Hughes, do you think a child should be told if they're adopted, or do you think it should be kept under wraps? Right, very interesting. I don't know. Bit of a tough one, that. If anybody's got experience, do let us know. It's going to be a long season for a certain team, Scotty. What do you think about that situation? 
we don't really comment on football, to be honest. I think there's more to life than what did you think of the game. Hi, Scotty. Say a big hello to Alex, says Ian Johnston. Tell them, says Margaret MacDonald. Tell them. Absolutely. Shalice is not well, but she's uh, able to post, which is excellent. Michael, Paul, McVeigh, Dinky Do, nope, says Shalice. If you're just joining us, folks, a very, very warm welcome. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 that you're watching Scotty McClure and that we are live on the big one. Facebook Live, globally and internationally, just for you, Dinky Do. Yes, they should be told. I was told when I was 13. Is there any particular age you would say, Andy? Is there any particular way to tell a child that his adoptive parents are not his biological parents? I hope you're no sniffing a wee drum there, Scotty. You're roasting again, Scotty, says John Kinnear. I am. It's very hot in the studio, but we do need to be lit. Now tell me, I've got some more lights here. Do we need this on? Is that a help, or is it not? Do say. Cuddles for Andy Hughes, says Sharice. Absolutely, Sharice. Cuddles for you. Evening, Scotty. Better late than never, says Michael Bomberty. Well, yes, absolutely. And it's lovely to have you with us, I always say. If you've just joined us, folks, you are late. You're watching Scotty McClue, the first lord of the internet, and the world's top broadcaster with the Sunday night pop-up, the Scotty McClue Show, number 100 and 10. So there we are. Listening to Scotty in bed, says Mark Hunter. Uh, on or off? On or off? Yes, is it better like this? Or is it better like, see if I can get this right, like that? Is it better like that? Or better like this? Do tell. Uh, studio, I thought you were at home, says Karen Merkey. Yes, but we have the studio in the house with the soft set, Karen. So there you are, very important. Good man, says Michael Paul McVeigh. You see, it doesn't really matter where you are nowadays when you're broadcasting, because we're global anyway. You know, people just need to wake it up to the technology. You'll not have enough time to make any babies, uh, says something. Jav Salim's watching. Red card referee. We don't have a red card. We've got a yellow card. We can manage the yellow. I haven't red carded anybody. That's a lifetime ban. Yellow card. So there we are. No different Scotties, says Stephen Wearmouth. Right, so watch again, folks. Is it better like that? Or is it better like that? Right? Stephen Wearmouth can't see a difference. Secret location on McClue Towers. McClue Towers tonight. No secret location. This is very true, says Karen. Absolutely. Guys, if you just joined us, a very, very warm welcome. We're discussing what's the optimum number of children for a couple to have. Mark Gippert's watching. The first one, says Margaret McDonald. So, hold on, Margaret. Not this one, but that one. Is this correct? The second one, says Alan McGee. So, not this one, but that one. Is that correct? That, says Eddie Dobie Sr. Which, which do you mean that? That this or that that? It's better with the light on, Scotty. Thank you, Gordon. You need a top broadcaster to actually say, somebody who knows about directing television, to actually say when the lighting is better. Thank you to Gordon Ruddick. Very much appreciated. As many as they want. This isn't a dictatorship, says Greg McAuliffe. No, but common sense, right? There's common sense. There's a good bit of space between common sense and a dictatorship. Same, Scotty. Uh, Glasgow's a wonderful city, says Joseph Gibbons. Good statement. The second one, that's this one here. I'm going with what Gordon Roddick said because he actually knows. Uh, so, Scotty, I've been in Ireland, only caught snippets of news. So there we are. Stephen Wearmouth, you can never, ever, ever discuss anything like that on a live platform. So what I've got to do now, there we are is remove this comment. Hold on, guys. Hold the bus. Right? Oh, my goodness me. So there we are. Both the same. Yeah. There we are. Stephen Wearmouth, you should have known that. So there we are. No way. Right. Excellent. Okay, guys. Uh, Dinky-doo. Lovely to have you with us. Welcome, 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 I say. Um... Sharice, thank you, both the same. 
Winky dinky, excellent stuff. Uh, for a certain team, I'd say about 11 or 12 to get a football team. Every child is a miracle, Scotty. For those who can't conceive, fair point. Three is perfect with maximum two years apart. If the government won't pay for four, getting back to work is hard. Red card, says Andy Hughes. Absolutely, Andy Hughes. Should it, it should actually be down by now with a bit of luck. I think it is. So there we go. Uh, excellent stuff. Stephen Wearmouth, that was just one away from a lifetime ban. Um, yes, every child is a miracle. You are quite right. Paul Henderson, three is perfect with maximum two years apart. If four government won't pay, yes, we've had that one. And he's red carded. I'm live, live, oh sorry, I'm live and let live. We're all Jock Townsend's bairns. Let's not be too judgmental. Greg MacArthur, we're not being judgmental at all. We are discussing what's going on. Law, you need to powder your face, says Ian Johnson. Too much shiny skin. You'll just have to put up with it. Quality television. So there we go. And we don't actually, as yet, until you all dig into your pocket and start uh, putting something into Scotty McClure's PayPal or GoFundMe. We don't have a makeup department as yet, but we will sort that. Martin Mono, who's watching. Thank you, Martin. Lovely to have you with us. And a very warm welcome. I have got a shiny nose, but not a lot I can do about that, really. I don't have any powder with me. So, uh, wonderful stuff. Every child should be loved, not used. Do you know a place called Glassford, Scotty? Yes, I do. You've got a shiny nose. We know that. We don't need to hear about my shiny nose. I'll cover it up for the rest of the program. Funded and done till next week, Charisse. That is highly, highly generous of you. Now look after your pennies, my darling. Very much appreciated. Scotty is St. Nick, St. Nicholas, Santa Claus. So they are Santa, Saint, Klaus, Niklaus. Uh, foundation powder. Yes, a bit of foundation powder. There we go. Uh, Councillor Henry Anderson, come and join us. Dinky Doo, lovely to have you with us. You're all watching Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, first lord of the internet, popping up live on Facebook Live just for you. Scotty, listen to about 20 years ago. What about the single mothers? Well, that's another discussion, of course. It's a better place for the public to show for benefit. Keep on keeping, my good man. Oh, God blame me, Scotty. Dinky do. Dinky do. Lovely to have you with us and a very warm welcome. Time for a share, guys. Is everybody up for sharing? That would be fantastic. So there we go. Share, share, share. And uh, I'm just going to share now. If you can all do the same. That would be tremendous. I'll share to a page, and I'll share to the Scotty McClue page. I'm just having a wee kick around the corner. That's excellent stuff. And um, I'll just say we're live now. Is that okay with you guys? So there we go. Live now. Live. Oh, for goodness sake. Told you not to touch that. Right, here we are. Live. Now, excellent, right, that's going out, guys. I'm just going to post this live now, and uh, folk will come and join us. Can everybody else share, 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 share point at 15, at 30, 45, and double O. Ha ha, I recall the single mother debate in Hallam FM. Well, Scotty did his show on Hallam FM. Ha ha. ha. Hallam FM. Yes, that was the big radio station in Sheffield. And Scotty McClue was on Hallam FM from 10 o'clock sharp at night through until, was it midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning, I think. What a fantastic audience the Yorkshire audiences are. Scotty, do you always dress smart? Do you ever kick about in joggy bottoms? Well, no, not quite. But uh, I did have a T-shirt on a couple of weeks ago, and you'll see me looking like Onion Johnny. So there you are. Share, tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. How's the wife, Scotty? Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you for asking. Scotty is old school, says Brett Shepherd. Yes, I think the way you dress is a mark of respect for who you're going to see. And I'm going to see you. So 
I think I should dress up. Do you see what I mean? And I will put some makeup on when I can afford it. Scotty, it's your good self. Great to see you again, says Tony Mac. It is indeed me. That's an interesting one, Tony, isn't it? When you go up to someone and they go, oh, it's yourself. Uh, yes, yes, it is indeed. Well spotted. But little bit of silence brought to us courtesy of the Noise Abatement Society. Vest and joggies, says Sharice. Martin Morrigan, why are there so many UFOs spotted in Bonnie Bridge? These are not UFOs. I would imagine if you are seeing something in Bonnie Bridge, then you're seeing some uh, satellites in the sky when there's enough light. So they're reflected on the Earth's light. And it's just a bit of junk that's floating about in space, falling off a space station or a rocket, and you can sometimes see them. Scotty, you're an institution, and I mean that in the nicest way, says Greg MacArthur. Dinky do, Greg MacArthur. Lovely to have you all with us. What a fantastic evening it is tonight. Guys, can I say that 25,000 of you have joined me this week already to date. Two and a half million of you have joined me on Facebook Live since the shows began. And 25,000 also joined me last week as well. So keep sharing, keep going for it, keep telling 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClure Live on Facebook Live. This is the big one. Jacqueline Trotter's watching. Think you do. UFOs, says Sharice. Now, come on, polite Sharice. I hear, I wear the wife's nighty, says Derek. Yes, well, Derek, you know, each to their own, I say. Um, Martin, that's just people. <laughs> the UFOs. Christopher Love. Sea folk in supermarket pajamas. No rights, says Market Jipper. Somebody did tell me that there are one or two cities in Scotland. I shan't name them because we don't want a huge row. But uh, people do go out in their slippers, in their gaff shoes. You know, now that's surely not quite right. So, you know, I think it, it doesn't. The best advice my friend got when he retired was don't put on your, don't put on your slippers in the morning. Put on your shoes. Fantastic. Murray Ramage is watching. I've seen a UFO. I bet you've seen a few of them. Me, i seen one ages ago. You didn't see one, Brett. You saw one. Right? That would be your past tense. Murray Ramage, dinky do. A very warm welcome from me, Scotty McClue, to every single one of you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are we doing for sharing, guys? Let's get these numbers up. Tell 10 to tell 10. I drive in my slippers. What are you saying, Scotty? We see the International Space Station from the hills regularly when we're building the nation's electricity substations. Matthew Roberts can confirm. Hello, Scotty. Um, how am I joining late tonight? You are indeed evening, boss. The sweat's dripping off. You're not quite dripping off me, Murray. I'm just very warm because the studio is very warm. It's good to share, Scotty. Hope you're well, says Charles A. Diver. Excellent stuff. Wonderful. Lovely to have you with us. And here's Yin Ong. Excellent Yin Ong. Welcome, welcome. And how? Ni hao. There we go. And uh, just a bit of uh, a little bit of Mandarin for you there, guys. I seen Elvis in a chip shop. No, you saw Elvis in the chip shop in Castle Milk. You didn't see him. At least you always wear your cap. Always wear my cap when I'm uh, going out. Never a problem. Dinky do. Sean McCormick's watching. Lovely to have you with us, Sean. Now, I'm just going to uh, share to our group, guys, okay? So that'll uh, get a few of you, right? Good evening, Scotty, and a wee kiss from Susan Forrest. Good evening to you, Susan. Lovely to have you with us. Scotty would be ace as a headmaster, says Brett Shepherd. There you are. Well, stranger things have happened. Schools do need headmasters. Yeah, uh, you know, and I'm certainly well qualified. Uh, Dave Harley's watching Dinky Doo and Emoji Slipper. Yes, ne emoji slipper. Oh, a slipper emoji. I thought you were wearing emoji slippers. So there we are. I thought that's novel. I actually remember these slippers you used to get with a face on them, Mickey Mouse slippers. I thought it'd be great to put on my finest blue suit and go into a boardroom meeting with them on. Uh, you saw him, Neil. I saw Elvis when he was flying in a UFO, says Neely David Cooper McCallum. Of course you did. Uh, Sean Michael Martin. Excellent, excellent. Lovely to have you with us. Big share going on here, guys. Uh, I'll do some inviting first. Invite you all as well 
and then we can do lots more sharing. If you can all do the same, come on, get on with it. This is how we build our audience for the program. We tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. It's all very well you sitting there enjoying yourself. What about the poor souls that don't know that Scotty's on? And they're sitting watching some nonsense in television when they could be watching Scotty McClure live on Facebook Live, the big one, the one everyone's talking about, the one everyone is writing about and watching and discussing. This show, guys, believe me, is a phenomenon. VJ Dukerham's joining us. All right, Scotty, says Paul Donnelly. Elvis is dead. This is a fact. You are correct. Right, so there we are. Share to groups, and uh, I'll just put live now. Very important. Excellent. Everybody then knows. Live. Now. Join me. Live now. Join me. Is it bad put join me or join Scotty McClure? What do you think? There we are, and we'll send that out and let folk know. I think it's only fair, guys. It's only fair. It's unfair not to let people know. Because they're sitting, as I say, at home, and there's quality on here. Everybody should be watching the whole of Facebook for a start, and then everyone else as well should be having a watch. So there we go. Live streaming. Excellent. Excellent stuff. There we go. Just about there. Just about there. Just about there. Wonderful. Oh, oh, I think that's kind of it. I think we have to stop. You've got to stop somewhere, don't you? I always remember after I got burgled and I lost my beautiful gold ring to some wee thug that would just flog it. I hope they, they got themselves a warm coat, though, or something like that. Put it to some use. And I can remember getting some new locks on the flat. And um, the locksmith came in, and I said, what about putting maybe another fastening on here? Anyway, you've got to stop somewhere, son. So there we are, the place of that fortress. Buckled, says Sharice. Sharice is buckled. Paul Bexfield is watching. Was lost in the ghetto, says Greg MacArthur. Elvis was. My pet mouse was called Elvis. He died when he was caught in a trap near Nogormley. I'm sorry to hear that. I once humanely trapped a mouse and took him about three miles from the house to let him out, let the wee soul out, he scampered off, and a magpie swooped down and grabbed him. The wee soul went, eee! And I felt terrible. I thought, I tried to save your life. Running late, Scotty, what have I missed, says Charles McLachlan? You have missed the most fantastic show, Charles McLachlan. We're talking about how many children is it suitable for a couple to have and people are having a go, and we're discussing it very, very properly, as we always do on the Scotty McClure Show. This is show number 110. I'm sweating, says Sharice. Yes, all right, Sharice. Too much information. You're not sweating, dear. You're glowing. That's what I would say. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come and join us, Scotty McClure, just for you. I'm buckled, says Andy Hugh. Mwah! Karen Mercury is having a laugh. There we are, wonderful. The talk of UFOs is just suspicious mind. I would never suggest UFO. So there we are. Cherise Stinky Do, if you were the captain of a UFO, do you think you would take the Bonnie Bridge Road out of Stirling? Now come on, front up, be honest, step up to the plate, spill, open up. So there you go. Uh, Dinky Doo, says Jacqueline McFarlane. Dinky Doo, welcome to Scotty McClure, the world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet, Sunday night. Nothing gets past me, you know. Uh, two kids is enough for anyone. Well, it depends, Steve Burrows. You know, I mean, what does that mean? I'd wing it, Scotty, says Sharice. Wing it. Wing it in a UFO. We'd take the high road, says Andy Stewart. Yes. And see Dougal. Uh, warp speed, Scotty, says Brett. Brett, sorry. Brett, what do you mean warp speed? Uh, Andy, your soccer 10 4 over, says Sharice. So there you are. Uh, Sharice is therefore a bit of all right says Sean Michael Martin. Well, she sounds all right to me, if you know what I mean. George R. McFarlane, dinky-doo. So excellent. I mean, everybody 
is a bit of all right to the right person, aren't they? Scotty, we had six children, and my four daughters boss me about, says Charles McLachlan. Good, Charles, you probably need it. How do you know UFOs aren't real? Surely we are the only ones in the universe. Don't quite know what you mean by that. These people who say they've seen UFOs when coming back from the pub, says Tony Mac. So, Elvis only had one wane. Good evening, Scotty. Hope you are well. I got three beautiful daughters, says Neil O'Gormley. Stalkers in this chat room, says Sharice. Don't worry, Sharice. We will weed them out. I mean, warp speed has UFOs going fast. And you have the same name as Scotty in Star Trek. Yes, thank you very much. Beam us all up. Agnes and I had seven children. And then I discovered I was gay, says Gordon. Gordon, stop your nonsense. So there you are. Just stop it, for goodness sake. Uh, so there you are. You will probably turn out to uh, be gay when the rocks melt with the sun. So there you are. Lol, beam us up, Scotty. It's all to do with what parents have got to offer uh, the bringing up of children. Excellent stuff. Michael McGuigan is watching Dinky Do, Sharice. Uh, greetings and salutations, Mr. Scotty, says Greg MacArthur. Greetings and salutations to you, Greg MacArthur. From me, Scotty McClue, the first lord of the internet. Is this a dating site, says Sean McCormick? No. It's not a dating site, so stop it. My wife hit me with a flying saucer. I once went speed dating, but I was far too slow. Uh, Thomas John McDougall, dinky do. Do you have an Alexa? Um, no, but I've got to, I've got a girlfriend, if that's any help. So there you are. Uh, Scotty, what's your thoughts on the price of fish? I think the price of fish is the same as the price of farsh. So there you are. If you're afraid of the northeast, excellent. Uh, Sean, it's a blind date. Yes, there you go. I once went on a blind date and she knocked the door and she shouted, where do you want the Venetians? Uh, how are you, Scotty? How are you doing, says Thomas John McDougall? Um, PPJs and dressing gowns in the supermarket, somebody says. Missed that one. And uh, take me to your leader, says Neil O'Gormley. Right, well, they'll all come here. All roads lead to Rome. And Rome, in this case, is Scotty McClue. Excellent stuff. Darren Christie's watching. Dinky do, Darren. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. In fact, we're late for a share. Guys, can we get sharing and sharing and sharing? As much as you all like. There's Ying Ong. Fantastic. He lives in Yangon. Fantastic. Yangon. Ying on from Yangon. Share to a page. Fantastic. I'll share to the public. Let them know. If you can all do the sharing, guys, share, 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 share. Deep sea fash. Pat me doon, says uh, Sharice. I don't know what she means by that. Do you mean they're a little bit windy? Have you ever wakened up in the night and had to get the wind off the chest? There we are. Peppermint. Uh, tablets are very good, so I believe. Elvis delivers the fash and the broch. So that's that's what happened. Uh, why haven't you shared? It's been seven minutes. We're sharing now. Uh, Scotty McCleary, you're lord of the internet, and you're so good at that. You should be on every night. Come back to radio. Well, who knows? There's big discussions going on with radio and television people. Um, so, excellent. Michael McGuigan, a fash on the phone. Now, does anybody want to phone me? You could phone me on Messenger, and we could take a call. That would be rather fun. So, if somebody's wondering what to do, tell me this. Uh, Sandy Howden, sorry I'm late, Scotty, just back from Canterbury. I walked into a civil war. So there you are. Yes, a lot of civil wars round about Canterbury, I would think. Yes, people wondering. Old pilgrims. Um, don't be having any more Wayne's McClue. And we'll have to start another crowdfunder. We need to get this crowdfunder warmed up. I'll tell you that, Gordon. Uh, so, excellent stuff. Scotty, I'm late again, says Dean of the Dog. Excellent stuff. Andy's phoning. Fraser John Edmison, how are you getting on? Not bad at all. So, there we go. Hold on a wee second. Just missed it, that one. Somebody been on. We've shared. Yes, we've done that. And uh, then we've had that one up. Baby Shark, we've got that 
and we'll just take this guy out. There we go. Excellent stuff. Scotty, I'm late again. Need a pat doing them, having flushings. So there you are, the hot flush. Do you guys have a menopause? Not that this is anything to do with you, love. I was just saying when you mentioned hot flushes. I know ladies sometimes get hot flushes. Do guys have a menopause? So you can tell us about that. Andy, you're on it. You're on it big time. So wonderful. Uh, good night, pal. See you soon. Have a good week, says Thomas Hamilton. Good night, Thomas Hamilton. Thank you for all your support. Much appreciated. Ha, 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 ha. The funnies. Scotty's Facebook phone in. Yeah, phone now, though. And uh, you can phone on Messenger, and I will take your call. Open the windy. We can't open the windy. The windies are sealed. So there you are. You're sweating, pal. I'm not sweating. I'm glowing. Gary Crossan. There we go. Excellent. Oh, wee bit of a mop doon. Always very important. A swatch round, a swatch round the coupon with a clammy chamois. That sorts us out. The actors, actors always used to have the clammy chamois around about the back of their neck. All that kind of stuff. Whoops, my microphone here. Oh, very good. Just tapped it there and I can hear it's live. Open the windy, man. No, man. We're soundproofed, for goodness sake. I haven't got many paws, says Eddie Doby Senior. You won't have. You'll have two legs and two arms. Bye, Tam. So there we are. Right, Sean Michael Martin, I think you're going to have to go. So there we go. Uh, definitely. Any more nonsense? And it's a lifetime ban. So there we are. Uh, Sandy Howden, we can't talk about that. I'll delete your comment. But you're lucky you got away with it. Jonathan Gold, Dinky Do, Tony Mac, had a hot flush after a very hot Madras curry. I remember a guy, um, and the manager apparently of the curry house was just watching him. He told him to make it as hot as he could, and he just watched him devouring uh, pitchers of water. Glasgow's the first city to introduce tea shops. Well, you'd miss Cranston's, Kate Cranston's tea rooms. Charles Rennie Macintosh to sign them for her. Um, I had a hot flush when I heard the price of a pint in London. Absolutely. It's quite dear, isn't it, down there? Sean Michael Martin is lolling. Sean Michael Martin, you do need to stop that or it is a lifetime ban. All right, because nobody's interested in spoilers like that. Not funny. Uh, Kevin McDonald, Dinky Do. So there we are. Uh, my windy cleaner has a chamois. Ring, sting, stop, stop, says Charisse. Ring, 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 ring. Uh, ring, sting, stop. So Charisse is having trouble with um, her, uh, her, her, um, yes, well, her ladies' stuff. So there we are. Roll of honor. R O L E, Sean McCormick, it would be R O L L. Uh, good morning from Brothers House. So there you are. The uh, Male Suicide Prevention Group, says Matty. Excellent, Matty. A warm welcome to you. Uh, get a proper desk and some headphones for your show, Scotty. No sooner said than done. I have headphones right here. See? There you go. Headphones. All right. Excellent stuff. Are you lost for what, Scotty? Greg MacArthur. Why would I be lost for what? For goodness sake, I'm a word. Smith, shake your shabby. Ahoy, Scotty. How are you, my shipmate? Hello, me old uh, bosun's mate. David McCafferty there, a man that knows a lot about the sea and ships. I need to go and sit outside. So she, yes, all right, dear. Uh, she's, she says she's glowing. If I phone up, they'll have to have subtitles, says Derek. Not at all, Derek. Think you do. Almost time for a shade again. Seven minutes since the last one, my goodness. I didn't believe it. Uh, I'd, I'd suck one of them in. I'm soaking. Uh, so who have we got here? Hold on, missed that. Uh, Agnes has suffered menopause symptoms since 1991. Terrible mood swings. Violence, aggression, cussing and swearing at me 24-7. But I wouldn't change her for the world. I think that's more to do with you, Gordon, than the menopause. So there we are. Um, Greg MacArthur says you need some wind up your kilt. So there you go. Uh, so what have we got here? How's your geography? 
says Steve McPherson. It depends where you're wanting to go, Steve. So there you are. You can test me out if you like. Uh, so, Sharice there in the Roaring Forties. If you just joined us, folks, a very, very warm welcome. You're watching the first lord of the internet and the world's top broadcaster, Scotty McClure, just for you with the Sunday evening late night pop-up show. We've had several pop-ups, show number 110. How good is that? Conor McGregor, thank you. Where's Santa Fe? Santa's Fe, um... The North Pole, I think. Uh, first caller gets a free trip to the moon, says Dino the Doug. Yes, and a boot up the backside from yourself, no doubt, Dino. So there we go. Right, nearly Davy Cooper McCallum. Calm it down. Calm it down. Okay. We have a facility here, and if anybody steps out of line, it's a lifetime ban. Uh, so there we go. Four pound a pint here, says Derek Jimmy Walker. Four pounds a pint I remember the doctor asking me, he said, do you drink and how much? I said, cider, four pounds a pint. Uh, so there we go. Used to work for STV, says Callum McMahon. I did. I worked for four ITV companies in all. And uh, wonderful stuff. So there you are, Gordon Sterling. Settle yourself down. Somebody is calling, Scotty McClure, Ian Johnston. Uh, if you give it a second or two, we will answer and we will chit chat to you. Tremendous. Ian Johnston, hello. Just be a second or two coming up. Hope he stays on. Hope he stays on. Red card, Scotty. For Yes, absolutely. Well, we don't have a red card. Yellow card. Next is a lifetime ban. So there we are. Right. Hello. It's just coming up now. Hold on, hold on. You must have patience when you're ringing Scotty McClure. As I learned, it's unwise to argue with a woman. Going through her time of the month, says Tony Mack. Phone in, says Sharice. Red card, Scotty. Get on the phone. Andy, come on. Hello, Ian. Here we go. Hello, Ian. We answer. Hello, Ian. I'll try him and see if we get him to answer. That might be easier. Homebrew, 30 pence a pint. Fantastic stuff. So there we go. Guys, if you've just joined us, a very warm welcome to you. Here we are, Ian Johnson ringing. How do we answer this? That's, that's for hanging up. Where do we answer? Trying to answer you, Ian Johnson. We can hear it ringing. We need it to answer. Let's see if he answers. No problem at all. Ian Johnson wins the moon tickets. Yes, if he answers his phone. Like the sound of that. I love phone rings. It's PPI. Hello, Sansa's Will Carter. Hello, Will Dinky Do. Any Dobby Senior just to say hello. Facebook phone in. Did you get punted for the radio? No, never been punted in my life. The radio got punted by me, Lee Whirling Dervish Sexton. So, Facebook phone in. Big, big stuff. 25,000 people. Excellent. Two and a half million overall. Wonderful. Hello, Ian. No answer. Right. Do we shut Ian's phone down, would you say? Or do we redial him? We'll redial him. See if he answers. So, Scotty, can you play the squeeze box? For who's... Did you not used to have a wee lassie doing the phones on Scott FM? Yes, we did. We did have that. Excellent stuff. Scotty. Can you play She's a Belter? Said Martin Monaghan. Excellent, Martin. Hello. Hello. Are you hearing me now? Hello. Of course we can, Ian. How are you? Uh, I'm, I'm great. How are you? Uh, great to hear you. Thanks very much for ringing in. Oh, no problem, Sky. What we've got, Ian, as you know, we've got work in progress. So we're wanting to build oh, up the call side of it. And it's very much appreciated when somebody like your good self calls in. That's what it's all about. It's fantastic. Are you enjoying the show? Oh, absolutely. Never a doubt. Do you think it was a wise move? I think it's a great move. I get the wee sarky people going, oh, is this what you're doing now? What happened to the radio? Like a guy there said, did you get punted from the radio? Oh. This, this is much, much bigger than any radio station. You know? 
it, it gives people a chance to uh, give a bit uh, of themselves into it, you know? Yes, I mean, yes, a bit of discussion. And folk that might not have had the bottle like you've got to phone can come on and say something. Well, that, that's the whole point, is people need to get more bold and do these things. Yes, it's wonderful. It's wonderful, so it really is appreciated. Like last time we did this, last time we did it, Scott, he was uh, on the phone to uh, Alex Salmond. Yes, yes, absolutely. From LBC. LBC. Absolutely well. You're doing a fantastic job. You're very good. Keep your calls up. Yeah, well, I mean, at the end of the day, that got a result because uh, Clark uh, Pontifati got, um, well, there's no longer a arrest warrant out against her. Yeah. That's what that call was about to Alex Salmon. Yeah, good for you. And listen, lovely to hear you. And dinky do. Yeah. Well, on, sir. We'll catch up soon. There we go. That's uh, Ian calling in. Marvellous, marvellous stuff. Hell, I'm phoning about your accident, says Gary Cross. Gary Cross, stop me, silly. For goodness sake, give the switchboard job to Sharice and answer the phone. How many ships did the British lose at the Battle of Trafalgar, Scotty? And where was the battle? Uh, the Battle of Trafalgar would be at Cape Trafalgar. So there, are, there was a set-up of battles. You had the Battle of the Nile, 1801, Abukur Bay, right? You had um, Cape Finisterre, you had Cape St. Vincent. You had, uh, what else did you have? There were a number of sea battles, because Britain obviously wanted to keep her command of the sea at the time. Fantastic stuff. So there we are. Excellent. Right. You're listening to Scotty McClure. Am I right? David McCafferty. And uh, did they lose? Was it just, was it three ships they lost at the Battle of Trafalgar? Am I right? Certainly was the victory. The victory obviously wasn't lost because she's back home. But I bet she was quite badly damaged. Um, you should press the answer button, Scotty. Ian, according to our records, says Dave Harley. <laughs> Some of the nonsense. I'm shy, says Jerice. Get the lovable lassie back, shouts Dina the dog. Fantastic. Go on, you're Sally in. That was the lovable lassie. Whatever happened to the lovable lassie? I'm still in touch. Ian is so inspiring. How do you phone in, says um, Sean Michael Martin. You would just dial on Messenger. And I shall answer. The lovable lass, says Rem Hill. What happened to the lovable lassie? Get her back. Everybody's talking. Sharice could be the lovable lass, says Charles McLachlan. So they are. You and Davy, great to have you back, Scotty. I've missed you these past 20 years. You're still the man. Lovely, lovely. What is the point in this, says John Paul McCockney? The point of this is it brings the people of the world together for a global phone-in, John McCockney. You cannot get more noble than that. So there you are. Where are you from and what do you wish to say? Ah, McClure taking calls, just like old times. What about the tall puddle martyrs of the tanks in George Square, says Greg MacArthur. Yes, or the march of the blank so they are of the Jarrow Crusade. Um, America invaded the UK by sea and sunk a British warship off the coast of Ireland. John Paul Jones from Dumfries led the attack by the US. He was from Dumfries, you're absolutely right. The founder of the American Navy was a Dunhamer. Uh, John Paul, what's the point in your comment? says John Adams. Exactly, John Adams. The evidence is there. He's saying, what's the point in this? And we've never had a dull moment in two years. What a strange thing to say. You're watching the Scotty McClure Show. We are live on Facebook Live, the World Stop Broadcast Platform. I'm Scotty McClure, the first lord of the internet and the World Stop Broadcaster. Uh, the point was, I was wondering what he was talking about. In that case, John Paul McKechnie, you listen and then you will hear what we are talking about. You've got two ears and one mouth. Excellent proportions in your case, sir, if I may say. Oh, goodness sake. I don't know. Bit of a mop doon. Warm, warm in here tonight. Warm reeking. 
So there you are. So that's the point. Uh, thank you for taking the call, Scotty. This is Ian Johnson, not at all, Ian. Lovely to hear you. Nation was lost, Scotty. Fought the Spanish and the French. A lot of damage, though. Do you know why um, plus or rum and gin was stronger percentage than the normal booze? So there you are. No, but I do hope you're going to tell me because I haven't even scratched the surface when it comes to knowledge. Scotty, what about the Boston Tea Party? Yes, when people dressed up as North American Native Indians and emptied all the tea into the harbour at Boston. That's right, and hoped the North American Native Indians would get the blame of it, but it wasn't actually them. Alan Cadden, good evening, Scotty McClure. So there are the Boston Tea Party because of the price of tea, and that's why you had your lockable tea caddies around that time. Greg MacArthur, I feel like I'm caught in a trap and that some folks are wooden hearts. So, Scotty, return the bams to sender and we'll be all shook up. Right, good one, Greg MacArthur. Some excellent Elvis referencing in there. We do admire you. Very, very creative. I think it was the Allies that won the Second World War and not America. America only got involved when Pearl Harbor was bombed. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that uh, Franklin Roosevelt was a bit off at first. Um, it says, I can't spell cause you haven't accepted my friend's request, says Sean Michael Martin. So there you are. Well, Sean Michael Martin, we have to know if you are trustworthy or if you are going to cheek up. My phone died, says Sharice. We're so sorry to hear that, Sharice. Is it going in the paper? Get it, Jimmy Walker's coming on. Let's see if we can get him up here. Fantastic. Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Right, answer. Right, Derek, Jimmy Walker, you'll have to give it a moment or two just to uh, to filter through, and we will get chit-chatting. You're watching Scotty McClue, folks. First Lord of the Internet, this is the big one. Sunday night, we have to finish at 10 o'clock sharp. So make sure you tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. It's time to share again. We're well past our share time. Come on now. If you're not in the morning for the phone. Good morning, Scotty from Australia. How are you? Erica Meyer and the Fox. Erica, lovely to have you watching in Australia. My dad was in Burma under Lord Mountbatten. He used to say Americans were oversexed, overpaid, and over here. Absolutely, Louis Mountbatten. Wonderful man. It's because you spilled normal booze. That's why the naval rum was 70 Plus, I've got two mouths and one ear. Hard to listen. Andy, get it on. Hello, Jerry, Jimmy Walker. Jerry, Jimmy Walker, dinky do. I'll try him, and we'll see who's going to say. See, a phone call from me. Right. So, all right, we'll see if we get a phone call from you. And uh, Margaret Mackay is watching. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Right. Contacting. Here we go. Just stick with it. Ringing. Call ended. He's ended it. Right. We'll redial him. Excellent. Let's see if he picks up this time. Wonderful. Uh, you're, you're watching Scotty McClure. We're taking some calls live on the show, guys. Excellent stuff. And uh, we'll see if uh, if Derek picks up there. We're contacting. And this should be... There we go now. Now you're talking. Can everybody hear that? Are we dinky do? The Chindits in Burma. Was Scotland right to try to colonise Darren, Darien, Darien, the Darien scheme? Yes, the Bank of Scotland. I was going to ask on the phone, what's the picture behind you? Picture behind me, that one, there's me. I heard a story about how Mountbatten died. I haven't researched it, says VJ Dukaram. He was blown up by an IRA bomb. I think it was actually a splinter group. Uh, we need to check. But uh, he was at Classybourne Castle, his summer retreat, and uh, his little grandson was killed with them. And his daughter, Patricia, was very, very seriously injured. She'd, um, you know, uh, literally, I think it was hundreds of stitches in her face. Yes, and uh, the lovely, lovely, lovely people. It should never, ever, ever have happened. Um, and Lord Mountbatten was a man that had they spoken to him, they would have learned about his negotiating skills, and he may actually have been able to help. So there you go. Uh, Scotty, answer the phone. I have done. There's no answer. I'm ringing him. 
So there we go. We'll try them once more. Yeah. See what happens. Hello. Uh, Bell's Hill in the truck, says Andy Hughes. Shocking, says Margaret McDonald. It was shocking. So there we are. Donald Boyd block. Right. We'll never, ever, ever hear from Donald Boyd again. All right. So he's gone. Um, come on, says Sharice. Yay, Sharice Stinky do. Go on. Are you answering, Derek Jimmy? No, absolutely not. Okay. Oh, ho, says Karen Mercury. Oh, ho, Karen. A very, very warm welcome. How's the time going? Guys, we're very, very tight for time. Red card, yellow card with a bit of red. Have we got some red? We've got something with red in it to put over for the red card. There we are. Um, there we are. One of these, an Uncle Joe's balls tin. That'll do. Uh, that's that. You seem to attract the finest people on here. We do attract some very good people. You're obviously going to get the eighties. Scotland in the 90s, Shinny Easton got booed in Glasgow for pretending to have an American accent. She's lived in America. Chalk a block. What's that mean? That just means we're very, 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 very busy. Uh, do you ever watch Still Game? I have seen it. Red card and a boot up the hee-haw. <laughs> so there we go. Right, Derek Jimmy Walker. Come on. Let's have you. Let's have you, son. We're trying to answer you, Derek. There we go. Uh, anyway, red card. Yes, absolutely. That's where we got to. Guys, if you've just joined us, welcome, welcome, welcome. You're watching Scotty McClure. This is the big one. Another bit of a mock doing there. Oh, fantastic. Gavin McVicker's watching. We'll stood at the door and step it through. These phones are ringing off the hook. Right, we've tried you, Derek Jimmy Walker. We'll try you once more. Uh, and we'll all shine on. Hearty Gardy on the windy box, says Neely Davy McCooper. Uh, no, we'll see if I've got the uh, got the piano. What's going on here? Right. See if he answers. Excellent stuff. Another great show again, says Steve Burrows. Steve Burrows, I thank you. It's been a fantastic show tonight. Outstanding. Love you, Scotty. You make me laugh, says him. Hello. Hello. Hello, Scotty. Hello, Derry, Jimmy Walker. How are you? All right, yeah. How are you? Fine. Good for hearing you. Oh, it's a great show tonight. It's been a fabulous show tonight, Derek. It really has. Brilliant. <laughs> and are you up in Kirkcaldy in the Lang Toon? No, I'm in uh, Rochester in Kent. Oh, you're in Rochester in Kent. So you are. You told me that. I beg your pardon. So I was born there in Kirkcaldy. You were born in Kirkcaldy, but you're now down in Kent. Yeah. Tremendous stuff. Listen, it's been lovely to hear you. We're tight for time, but next week we'll try and get through a bit quicker. Oh, well, when you was a quick, you say a quick hello. A quick hello. <laughs> Hello. 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 Hello, everybody. Dinky do. Hello, Scotty. Hello, Doc. Hello. How are you doing, me darling? Yeah, all right. Big case, day. Yeah. Uh, I, I need go. TT. All right. You take care. TTFN. <laughs> that, that's Mrs. Walker. Fantastic, Derek. That was brilliant. Thank you very much. Off you go, La. Catch up soon. Take you do, pal. There we are. Fantastic. Hello from Eastern PA, says Charles Franks. Charles Franks, lovely to have you with us. Welcome to the Scotty McClue Show. We're on every Sunday night at 9 o'clock sharp. Never, ever, ever miss a second of Scotty McClue or you miss a moment of life, I say. I was going to see if I could play you out. On the piano, shall we say. Uh, how are we doing for time? We need to go now. Bye, Derek and Wendy. Bye, Sharice. Night, night, everybody. Thanks for a fantastic show. This is Scotty McClure saying dinky-doo. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody. Of we to say no revoir and a cheerio. Hello from Dumbarton, says uh, Gavin McVicker. Night night, everyone, says Margaret MacDonald. Helen Tolly says bye. I'll play myself out. <laughs> Hey, 
Hey, dinky do my love. See you soon. Have a wonderful week, and we'll catch ya. I may do a random pop up from time to time. Make sure you're there. Always be there or be square. But from Scotty McClue to every single one of you, dinky do.